हेलो एवरीवन इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट प्लांट जर्म प्लाज्म कंजर्वेशन मीन्स हाउ वी कैन कंजर्व द जर्म प्लाज्म ऑफ प्लांट्स सो विदाउट एनी डिले लेट स्टार्ट द वीडियो सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी शुड नो दैट वट इज अ जर्म प्लाज्म सो जर्म प्लाज्म यू कैन से इट इज द टोटल ऑल जीन्स ऑफ अ पार्टिकुलर क्रॉप और अ प्लांट एंड इट्स रिलेटेड स्पीशीज दे मेक द जर्म प्लाज्म means the all of the gene of a particular plant make its germ plasm so here we are discussing that how we can preserve the germ plasm or you can say preserve the all of the genes of a particular plant for the future use so that in future we can use these genes for various research purpose and for the growth of you can say particular plant so here germ plasm ultimately the sum of all genes present in a particular crop here how we can conserve the germ plasm so germ plasm can be conserved by three ways first in situ conservation ex situ conservation and in vitro conservation so first of all what is in situ conservation here in situ means on site so when the plant or its germ plasm conserve within its natural habitat means we do not remove the plant from its natural habitat we just conserve the plant where it present or where it generally occurs it's on its natural habitat so example of this kind of conservation include national parks gene sanctuaries and natural reserves where we just provide the protection to the plants in their native habitats second is ex situ conservation here this ex situ means off site means in this kind of conservation we just take out or you can say we just transfer the plants from their natural habitat to some artificially created habitats like for example they require they include aquariums botanical gardens in which we just create the natural habitat and we just transfer or take out plants from its natural habitat and preserve them some other or you can say off site from their natural habitat so when the plants they are conserved outside from their natural habitat this include ex situ conservation and in vitro conservation so here it vitro conservation it include the preservation of the germ plasm in the form of their isolated protoplast cell seeds meristem tips somatic embryos etc so when the germ plasm is stored in the isolated form in the lab so that is known as in vitro conservation now in vitro germ plasm conservation it can be done by slow growth rate cultures and cryo preservation so this slow growth rate culture this is the process in which we just slow down the growth of culture so that they can preserve or conserve for longer period for this kind of conservation we generally preserve the germ plasm in the freezers under low temperature so that they can be you can say they can preserve for longer period but they cannot be preserved for you can say very long period for that we can go for the another method of conservation that is cryo preservation here in the cryo preservation we generally store the germ plasm at very low you can say ultra low temperature that is minus 196 and the best method for cryo preservation in which we include the or you can say we store the germ plasm or living tissue in the liquid nitrogen which have the temperature of minus 196 degree centigrade now what is the procedure of this cryo preservation so first of all we select the tissue means the tissue which we want to preserve then after selection we treat the selected tissue with some cryo protectant why we are treating with cryo protectant because when we will preserve our tissue at very or you can say ultra low temperature so there will be the formation of ice crystals which may damage the tissue or cells 
so in order to prevent the formation of these ice crystals we use some cryoprotectants like for example dmso dimethyl sulfoxide so this dmso or these cryoprotectant they prevent the formation of ice crystals hence they protect our cryopreserve tissue in third step we store these cryoprotectant applied tissue in the liquid nitrogen which have the temperature of minus 196 so this include you can say when we store in the liquid nitrogen so they can be preserved for very long time now when we want to reuse these cryopreserve or these stored tissue then we have to thaw them so the next step is thawing when we want to reuse them so thawing include in this thawing step we just you can say bring our cryopreserve tissue to the normal temperature for this generally we you can say place our tissue in the boiling water in the water bath and then we can also thaw with our hands to bring that cryopreserve tissue to the normal temperature so that we can reuse it after thawing the next step is the determination of viability means we check that whether the cryopreserve tissue is still alive or not means during cryopreserve preservation there are chances that tissue may get damaged or may become non viable so before using them we check their viability that whether the tissue is still viable or still alive so for this we use certain staining method and we use some staining dyes like for example one of the dye is evans blue so this evans blue dye it stain the dead cells blue so we stain our cryopreserve cells after thawing so the cells which become blue they are dead cells and while the unstained cells are the viable cells because this evans blue it can penetrate inside the dead cell only similarly the next example of dye is phenosephranin so similar to evans blue it also stain the dead cells and other dyes they include fluorescein diacetate dye that is fda dye this dye it can penetrate inside the living cells and stain them so in this method fda method only the living or viable cell will be stained and the non viable will not be stained similarly the next dye is tetrazoleum chloride here this tetrazoleum chloride dye that is ttc dye it also stain the living cells and the living cells there is the formation of red osa zone within the living cells so we can particularly identify the viable cells and after checking the viability of these you can say cryopreserve cells or tissues then we can perform for the next step that is plant growth and uh, regeneration so in this step we just take these viable cells only and proceed for the you can say plant tissue culture and ultimately we can proceed for the complete plant growth and uh, regeneration so by these step we generally perform the cryopreservation and they reuse after the cryopreservation so all of these step they comes under the cryopreservation so this is all about that how we can preserve the germ plasm and the basic procedure of cryopreservation so that's all for today guys see you in the next video thank you very much